We are in a series uh, called Built on the Rock. Uh, do we have slides? There it is. Built on the Rock. And, and this series, when, when we started talking about it, was what, what do we need in order to jump into the fall? What do we need in order to get ourselves ready for, you know, people come, start coming back to church in the fall. Summer's kind of like our vacation and, and all that stuff. And, and people put church kind of on the back burner, but not you because you're here and you're awesome and we love you. But this was a foundation of what, what's going to happen real, real soon. And so we called this Built on the Rock. And, and what we've been doing at Elevate, Elevate, we started last week and we're talking about Nehemiah. And I thought, you know, I've been reading a lot about Nehemiah. Nehemiah is this awesome person. If you haven't read about him, please go home and read your Bible about Nehemiah. And, and you are going to really be challenged by him. And, and we're going to talk about him a little bit today. Because Nehemiah was somebody who built things. He's known to us as the man who rebuilt the wall of Jerusalem. And, and as I think about this, we, in some way, shape, or form, are all building something. We are all building our, our health, our, our financial situation. We're, we're working on building whatever it is, relationships with your family members, relationships with friends, your, your life at work. We're all trying to build on something. And, and what happens when we declare that we're going to build something, when we're going to maybe change some things in our lives around, immediately there's opposition that comes to try to stop us. And that's exactly what happens with Nehemiah. That's exactly what happens in this story. Nehemiah, just a quick overview so we can jump into what I want to talk about. Nehemiah is met with his brother and a couple friends and, and they say, you know, you have to check out Jerusalem because this is where we're from. This is our people and the walls are torn down and, and the people there are just a disgrace and everybody's making fun of them and, and they don't have what they need. We need to do something about it. And Nehemiah, for whatever reason, just can't handle it. And he just sits there and he cries and he weeps and he's, he, he fasts for days. He prays for days. He, he doesn't know exactly what he's supposed to do, but he knows he's supposed to do something. <laughs> Have you ever been in that situation before? And, and so he, he thinks about this and he, he waits on this for four months and, and he goes to the king because he's a cupbearer. So he's, he's right next to the king. He works with the king all the time and, and he says, King, I need to do something about this. I need to go back to my home. I need to go back to my people and help rebuild this wall. And, and the king says, yeah, sure, go ahead. And, and, and then he asks for some other things. I need, I need some supplies. I need this. I need this. I, make me governor so that I can do all this stuff. And it's, it's just like God was behind this or, or something like You've been in those situations too. You ask for something, you're so afraid to ask for something, and then it comes so easy, and you're like, how the heck did this happen? The king gives him everything. Nehemiah travels to Jerusalem. He, he surveys the wall. He sees everything. He's making a plan for what he needs to do now, and he rallies people, and he gets his team ready to build. And so they're making changes to this place. And, and they're making changes to a place that has been dead and destroyed for over a hundred years. Well over a hundred years. It's been tried before. Somebody tried to rebuild this before and it didn't work. And, and all of these things that are just piling up and Nehemiah is thinking about like, wh why me? Why, why me? And so they're trying to change this place but not without some obstacles along the way. And, and, and this isn't some random wall. I want you to understand this. This isn't some random wall that they're trying to rebuild. This is Jerusalem. This is the spot that God called holy. This is the spot for God's chosen people. This is the spot that will bring glory back to God. So it's not just some task, some service project or anything that Nehemiah is doing here. Nehemiah is changing the lives of God's people by building this wall. And by building a wall, he's building the people. 
which is ultimately what he wants to do, which also leads to bringing glory to God. And so we've been in this series built on the rock, and we read uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of God, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. And so in this, in this series, last week we talked about living for God. And, and, and when you start living for God, people that ha- have been associated with you, that you associated with before, uh, you're going to start doing things that are different than what you did before, and they're going to start asking questions. They're going to start wondering, why are you not hanging with me anymore? Why are you not being with me anymore? Why are you not saying the things you said before? Why are you different? And then the very next spot in Peter, it says, don't be surprised when people try to stop you from changing. Don't be surprised when things try to knock down your wall. Don't be surprised when the friends that you thought you had are going to try to keep you where you were and you know you're supposed to be somewhere else that God has called you to be. And so that's what Nehemiah is going through here because Nehemiah is rebuilding this wall. He's getting all the things he needs. He's, he grabs his team and, and he starts rebuilding. But then there's some people that aren't too happy about this. And when you start to, to figure out that thing in your life that you need to change, when you start to figure out that thing that, you know, God is, is, is moving in my heart. God is calling me to change. God is calling me to do things at a higher level. Not everybody's going to be happy about that. And, and we're going to talk about four things that you need in order to change. Four things that, that will show up every time you change. And, and we're going to go back to Nehemiah. It says this, when Sanballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. Because not everybody's going to be excited about your change. Not everybody's going to be excited about the vision that God has given you for your life. And, and, and you start implementing things. You start changing things. Not everybody's going to cheer on your change. And so don't be surprised when that happens. Don't be surprised when people start saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? It says he ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, "Who are these? Fe- what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore the wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Like nobody said they're going to finish this in a day. But when you're working so hard for change, when you get a clear vision from God about change, you're going you're to change things so fast." that it's going to seem like you just want to get done today. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you, are you with me on that? Because because the passion in you is so strong. The passion that you have, the vision that God has given you is so strong that it's going to look like you are changing everything in a day. And so people are going to come at you and, and, and they're going to say, do you think you can get free from your addiction just because you showed up to church one time? Do, do you think you can get skinny just because you went to the gym one time? <laughs> do, do you think you can, you can change your financial situation just by not buying that cup of coffee one time? Sorry, Starbucks. <laughs> Listen, the enemy is, is always going to try to minimize your progress and, and make it seem like it's not as big a deal as it actually is. Because those one times and another one time and another one time, that adds up to a lot of times. And that's when things begin to change. Can they bring the stones back to life from the heaps of rubble burned as they are? You really think God is going to use you when when you did that in your past? 
you, you think you're going to change who you are because you, you're going to church now? You're going to change who you are because you have a relationship with Christ now? I know who you are. I know your past. I know everything that you've done. Who do you think you are trying to use these burned rocks that, that are, are, are no good, that have been sitting around for years and years and years? Who do you think you are? And so these sand ballots of our lives keep talking to us and getting in our head. And, and, and we meet another guy, Tobiah. So uh, I have a two and a half year old. And so we're watching Disney. And Netflix, I guess, made a deal with Disney. So there's all kinds of Disney movies on Netflix now. So, so we've been watching The Lion King. Um, you know, the old school Disney movies that are pretty good. Um, and... and so, <laughs> And so Tobiah, I, I, he probably wasn't this kind of person, but this is how I picture Tobiah, and so this is how I'm going to make you picture him today. In, in The Lion King, you remember the three hyenas? The, the, so there's, there's two that are kind of with it, and, and like they're the leaders, and then there's that third one that's, you know, crazy. Like, that's how I picture Tobiah in this story, because, like, he just says crazy things, and he's the guy that's, you know, just beside them and says, yeah, 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 let's do that, yeah, like, <laughs> that, that's, that's Tobiah. <laughs> it says, Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, what they are building, even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. And and I just picture him saying, (laughs) even a a fox would would knock this down. Because because he's just standing beside, and and Sam Bell is trying to get anybody he can to stop you from doing what you are called to do. Tobiah would be saying something like, uh, you bought some nice Nike shoes and some spandex pants and you think you're going to run a marathon. Like, <laughs> That's how I see it. <laughs> Listen, he's going to say you go to church one time and you think you're going to be completely changed. We know your past. We know everything. We know who God's people are. And we know that they've been walking around these parts of Jerusalem for years and years and years, and they can't do anything. Who do you think you are? And so here, here is the four things that, that we're going to be talking about. These things, if you try to avoid these things, you won't receive your change. If you try to skirt around them, you're not going to receive your change. And so the first one is, and take notes because this is good stuff, I promise you. You don't get change without criticism. You won't get change without criticism. And some people will never receive their change. Some people will never get skinny. Some people will never fix their financial situation. Some people will never, you fill in the blank, because somebody says something and they quit. See, the Bible tells us that the walls, they were about halfway up. And and Nehemiah is starting to get this criticism. That's when, when all of this is happening. And and, and they're building, and they're happy about it. They're working hard. They're going at it, and, and they're about halfway up. And that's when people start saying stuff. But but look at what happens before this, because we meet Sam Ballot. We hear the name Tobiah before this in, in chapter 2. It says, when they heard that Nehemiah was talking about these things, when they heard that he was getting ready to do these things, he wasn't necessarily getting uh, anything built yet. When they heard about these things, they perked up a little bit and they said they were very much disturbed that somebody had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. They weren't necessarily saying anything yet. They weren't necessarily super concerned yet, but, but they were taking notice that, you know, you're setting things up in your life a little bit differently than you were before. And, and it looks like you're about to, to get ready for some change. 
And, and people might not say anything yet, but they're going to start to take a little bit of notice. And it's not until you get to, you know, the halfway point of building things and filling in gaps and changing things in your life that people are going to start saying things and stop, uh, uh, start criticizing you for what you're doing. And, and, and at this point, I, I look at it like, oh, you, you want to quit smoking? Oh, that's, that's cute. Like, like they're not really tearing you down yet, but, uh, oh, you want to you wanna go to the gym? Oh, that, that's cute. You're just going to be like everybody else that goes in January and quits in February. You, you, you want to you wanna start eating healthy? Oh, that's cute. Here's a, here's a cheeseburger. And, and, and so they're not, they're not coming at you super strong yet, but, but they're still perked up and, and they're watching you. And see, what happens is when you start showing those changes in your life, when people begin to see, oh, this person isn't joking, this person is actually filling in the wall. This person is actually putting a rock on top of another rock and, and seeing some changes happen. Oh, I, I need to start tearing this thing down because this is going to affect me. Be, because a criticizer, all, all a criticizer is, is, is someone that pokes fun at people that, that do what they're unwilling to do. A, a criticizer is, is somebody that pokes fun at you because they're unwilling to do the hard work that you're doing right now. That's so good. Thanks for responding to that one. Good, good job, <laughs> preacher. Good job. Write that one down. Oh, you want to save money now? You, 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 want to, you want to start putting money in the bank now? The only reason they say that is because they can't save money. You, 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 want, to, you want to eat healthy now? The only reason they, they say that is because they can't eat healthy. That, that you you want to do this now? The only reason they're saying that is because they can't do it themselves. Nothing good ever comes without criticism. And so before we get it uh, any further, I just want to make sure we're clear because some of you are like, yeah, let the boy preach. This person's been criticizing me all the time for this and this and this and this. Well, there is a thing called constructive criticism, and maybe you're just lazy, um, because, because if somebody is coming at you and, and they're saying tough things and they're saying things that are trying to build you up, if somebody's trying to build you up and, and they're saying those tough things, you need to hear that and you need to receive that, because that's called constructive. That, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about when you're trying to do something good for your life, when you're trying to do good for other people's lives and people are trying to knock you down. Are, are we clear on that? Because that's exactly what's going to happen as soon as you start doing good for your life. People are going to want you to stay still where you are. Glad we got that cleared up. Listen, aren't you, aren't you glad that, that we're a church that gets criticized? Because, because we do, whether you know it or not. But a church that gets criticized is a church that's m making some moves. And, and so I've heard my fair share of things. I grew up in this church. I've seen a lot of things happen. I've, I've had a lot of things thrown at me and, and whatever. I'm not looking for a pity party, but I thank God for it because that means we're doing something. That means we're moving and we, and we get to be part of a church that's not just going to sit back and, and, and wait for people to show up. No, we're going to go out and get them. And we're going to go out and get that one more person that God's looking for. And we're going to go out and get that person and say, Jesus loves you so much and you need to hear about this. And so we go out to the mall. We go out to weird places. We go out to, and we find that person. And we'll get criticized for that. And we got to be cool with that. We got to thank God for that, and we got to expect it. A criticizer likes you better when you don't oppose the normal. They like you going to church, but when, when you leave church, they want you to leave church at church. They, they don't mind you saying you believe in Jesus, but, but when you start talking about Jesus in front of other people, that's when... That's when they got an issue. They don't, they don't mind stuff as long as it's not, as long as it's just talk. But when there's action behind it, when there's changes behind it, that's when the issues start coming up. 
And so what's going to happen is you're only going to experience the level of change in your life to the level of criticism in your life that you can handle. In other words, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. In other words, if you can't handle the criticism, don't be a leader. Because we're called to be leaders. We're called to be people that are going to bring Christ to other people. We're called to go out and tell people. And you will get hurt for that. If you're not being criticized, you're probably not advancing. That's tough. That's tough. Let's move on. Second thing, you don't get change without being challenged. And I know this sounds very similar to the first one, but it's different. And, and it says uh, in, in Nehemiah 6, it says, So we re rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height. This is what we just talked about. For the people worked with all their heart. But when Sambala, Tobiah, and all these other people heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's wall had gone ahead and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. And they talked with each other and they said, we need to start doing something different because just talking to people, just criticizing them, just trying to make them stop with our words isn't working. So we need to turn things up. And they said they plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. As soon as you say you're going to do something, the opposite of that thing is immediately going to show up. As soon as you say, I'm going to save money, there's going to be a sale everywhere. <laughs> as soon as you say you're going to start reading your Bible, all you're going to want to do is fall asleep. As soon as you say, I'm going to stay pure, there's going to be temptation everywhere. As soon as you say you're going to do something, the opposite is going to immediately show up. The enemy knows that if he can, if he can stir up this trouble, if, if, he can, if he can confuse you, if he can make you just go in circles, he's got you. He doesn't, he doesn't care about a halfway built wall. He can still push that over. He's cool with a halfway built wall. Go to church halfway. Put in halfway uh, effort into your relationship with your kids. Put in halfway effort into your job. Put in halfway effort. He's cool with that. But when you start saying, you know, <laughs> I'm all in. I'm 100% in this. We're not stopping at halfway. We're not stopping just because we got a little thing built here. We're, stopping until, we're not stopping until it's done. And, and, and halfway is not good enough. Uh, when I was in high school, I didn't really take my faith that serious. Uh, people knew I was a Christian. People knew I went to church. People knew my dad was a preacher and all that stuff, and, and it was cool. Um, but I didn't really... I, I, there's a lot of missed opportunities that I had. And... And it wasn't until uh, I was 17, 18 years old, my senior year, and, and, and I'm starting to think about, you know, what in the world am I going to do with my life? What in the world? Like, I, that's, I don't know if that's everybody, but that's when I started to evaluate, you know, what is going on with my life? And, and it was, you know, probably December, mid-school year, whatever. And I said, you know what? I'm, I'm in. I'm all in. I, I'm I'm not riding the coattails of, of my parents' faith anymore. I, I, just because my dad's a preacher doesn't mean I have my ticket to heaven. It, and, and so I'm all in. And immediately when that happened, things begin to change. The, the, the people that I thought were my friends started to, you know, kind of isolate me. And, and I started to be alone. And, and I started, no joke, I started to be invited to parties that I've never been invited to to before, that, that I knew what kind of parties they were. It, it was almost like a, a switch flipped as soon as I decided this. And, and, and I don't know if I would have been able to handle it as long as I did, but thank God he has perfect timing and, and he got me out of that situation with a thing called graduation and got me out of high school. Um, but what I'm saying is, 
as soon as you decide to take a stand for your life, as soon as you decide to take a stand for whatever it is you want in your life, things are going to begin to change, not just in you, but everywhere around you. And, and we have to be ready for that. We have to expect that. Because when we expect it, we'll be able to handle it a little bit better. Hmm. I hope you're writing this stuff down, because in my head, this sounds really good. Oh, here's, here's something else I wrote down. We, we don't ever know. We've been talking about breakthrough all year. We don't ever know when that's exactly going to happen. But what I do know is when you decide to do something in your life, things are going to come at you. And, and I also know that when things seem like they're getting tougher and tougher and the challenges are getting harder and harder, I haven't been on this earth super long, but I, but I do know that when that happens, when things get harder and harder, my breakthrough is, is right around that corner. Because, because if your breakthrough is way over here, like the enemy doesn't need to do anything to try to stop me from getting there. But as soon as I start getting closer to it, as soon as I start, you know, almost being able to reach it, that's when things get tough. So if things in your life are getting hard right now, if, if, if you're being so challenged right now in your life and you say, I can't handle it anymore, don't stop. Because your breakthrough might just be right around the corner. Walk around the wall one more time because you don't know if that's the time when it's going to fall down. Don't stop. Number three, you don't get change with comfort. Change, I mean, we all know this, we don't like change. But for some reason, we think we can change and still uh, or, or, or we can we can do the same thing that we've always been doing and expect a different result. We 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 want the benefits of change without doing any of the work to change. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> uh oh. We don't. We we want the benefits of change without doing the work to change. And, and change is so uncomfortable. You go to the gym, you want to get a nice body, you want to get healthy, you, whatever it is, that hurts. You want, to, you want to change your financial situation, you start not buying things, you start, that hurts too. You want to start changing your relationships with your family, with your friends, coworkers at work? That's tough. And that's going to be weird and awkward and hurt sometimes. Comfort. See, comfort is what got me into my addiction. Comfort is what got me into the situation I'm in. Comfort is what got me into, you name it. Being comfortable is what got me where I am today. And so if we're trying to change, if we're, if we're trying to put things in our life, if we're trying to, God, I know you have something for me, it's going to be uncomfortable to get that thing. And check out what Nehemiah said. Verse 14, it says, After I looked things over, because remember, they said, you know, our words aren't working. We need to start fighting them. We need to come after them. We need to kill them. Nehemiah says, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And we've kind of, in English, this word awesome, we've kind of like watered it down. But awesome is... <laughs> you get it? Like, this is who God is. God is... I can't even say what God is because, man, he just takes the words. Uh, there's no words to describe it. And this is Nehemiah. He's saying this. He says, fight for your families, fight for your sons and your daughters and your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot, we knew what they were doing and that God had frustrated it because God's on our side. We all returned to the wall, each to our own work. 
Yeah, they're going to come at me. They're going to do something to me. They're going to try to do something to me. God, take this. God, handle this. And then go right back to work. Yeah, but they're going to try to kill us. Yeah, but they're going to try to stop us. Yeah, but they're going to knock down our walls. God, take this and go right back to work. And it says, from that day on, half of the men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did the work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. So if you want to see change in your life, you, you, you're going to you're going to have to get uncomfortable. You're going to have to do things that weren't as easy before. See, because they were, they were working the whole time, and they were just building the wall, building the wall. They came there to build the wall. Nehemiah came to build the wall. He didn't come to fight. He came to build. But things changed. And the situation is different than it was before. So we need to equip ourselves differently, and we need to do things differently. And so we need to come ready for a fight. TJ got me this one year for Christmas. I don't know why. But it's come in real handy. And you're awake now, aren't you? And so what they said is, we're going to continue working. We're going to do it in a different way now. Because we're going to build with one hand. We're going to carry our materials with one hand. And we're going to fight with the other. And so, and so you're going to, to do this. You, 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 you're, going to, you're going to build your marriage with one hand, and you're going to fight off anything that comes in its way. You're going to build the relationship with your kids and do what it takes, the work that it takes, but you're also going to fight off the obstacles that are going to try to destroy that relationship. Do you get this? You're going to change with one hand, and you're going to fight with the other, and you're going to be ready for what's coming. Nehemiah said that everywhere we went, we had our weapon because we were ready. Nehemiah says, this is no joke. He says later on, even when they went to get water, they took their weapon with them. Even when I go to work, I'm going to take my weapon with me because I don't, who knows what's going to happen. Even when I open up my iPhone, I'm going to take my weapon with me because who knows what's going to pop up. Even when I go to school, I'm going to take my weapon with me because who knows what's going to be said. Even when I go home, I'm going to take my weapon with me because who knows what the enemy is going to try to divide. Even when I go to church, I'm going to take my weapon with me because what if somebody says something that, that makes me mad and, and nah, I'm not going to have that. We are going to be ready. And the last thing, you don't get change without consistency. We said it before, don't expect change just because you went to the gym one time. Don't expect change just because you opened your Bible one time. Don't expect change just because you ate one healthy meal last month. <laughs> we're going to expect change because we're going to be consistent. We're going to expect change because we're going to open our Bibles and read it even when we don't understand what we're reading. You still got to read it because you never know when it's going to make sense. Listen, some of you, you're, you're asking for help. You're asking for a leader. You're asking for somebody to pour into your life. And then they come and God provides that and they say some challenging things and they, 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 they say some things that, that might hurt a little bit. And you're like, I can't handle this. The thing you've been asking for your whole life, the thing you've been asking for for six months now, the thing you've been asking for, God's giving it to you, and it's hard, and it hurts, and it's uncomfortable, but it's necessary. Nehemiah says, we're not going to stop halfway. We're not going to stop when things look like we're doing all right. We're not going to stop and take a break and just admire half our work. He says this, he says, so on October 2nd, the wall was finished. Just 52 days after we had begun. Just 52 days 
This, this place ha, has been destroyed for hundreds, sorry, about 150-ish years. And it's rebuilt in 52 days. And all they did was put one rock on top of another rock and protect it. And then they put one rock on top of those rocks and protect it. And then they put that rock on this, these rocks and they protected it. Yeah, it might have taken longer than, than if they could have just worked without having to fight. But you got to take one of these rocks, burned as it is, with the past that it has, and put it on top of another rock. And, and, and so one more verse here. It says, when our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of God. Because see, when, when you start doing this work, when you start doing these changes, when you start setting yourself up for what God has called you to do, when you start putting one rock on top of another rock and another rock on top of that rock and another rock on top of that rock, eventually you're going to step back and say, man, I have a wall. It's not fun in the process. But when you get to step back and say, wow, this was... This was God. Because the rock that we're putting on top of the rock, that rock is Jesus. And, and, and he's, he's called the cornerstone. He's, he's called the rock of all rocks. He, whatever you want to call him, he's the firm foundation. And so wherever you are today, whatever vision God has been giving you, whatever changes God is telling you you need to make, whatever you know in your heart that you need to do, whatever you need to set up, do it. And don't stop until the wall is complete. And so what some of us need to do is just go back one rock at a time. One rock at a time. For others, we need to post guards day and night wherever we go. And we need to be ready because the changes that are about to happen in your life, the changes that are going to happen, the enemy is not going to be happy with it and he's going to do anything he can to stop it. And so if you would, just, just bow your head, close your eyes. And, 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 and if you are somebody here today that, man, my past, there's, there's no way God can use what I've done in my past. There's no way God can take this marriage that started the way it did and make it something good. There's no way this relationship is ever going to be rebuilt. There's too much time passed. There's no way any of this could ever happen. If that's you, just know that no matter how far away you are, no, no matter the distance between you and God right now, it does not matter because God says, as soon as you turn around, I will meet you there. God says, as soon as you come back to me, I'm there for you. From the farthest horizon, you can still come back to me. And so I pray today that if this is you and, and you need to come back to God and, and you need to meet with God, you need a, that relationship with God, you've never done this before, I pray that today is the day for you. Today is the day that you're saying, God, I, I feel so far away, but all I have to do is turn around. All I have to do is say, God, I want you. And he will immediately be right there for you. And so if that's you, uh, heads, heads bowed, eyes closed, privacy, concentration, all of that stuff. If that's you, today's the day you say, I want a relationship with Christ. Today's the day that I'm making changes in my life. Today's the day that I'm 
standing up for what God has called me to do. If that's you, would you just put your hand in the air? There's hands going up all over. You can put your hands down. But if you would, would you pray this with me? Everybody, we can pray this together. If this is the first time you're coming to Christ, just pray this, God, I, I, I know I've been far, far away. God, you know my past. God, you know my heart. God, today I declare that you are the son of the living God. And today I am in a relationship with you. And today I am set free. And today I start rebuilding my wall. Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand to everybody that put their hand up. And if that's you, man, come see us, come talk to us, come share that with us. Why don't you all stand up? We're going to sing.